Shiva Mayanaka, Eta Kudva, Kudimansha, Sita Krita Shabadaka. So it's a the secret of all secrets. Is, uh, well, that's, that's again going chapter nine. Get the session. This is the greatest secret of the Vedas, the Mukhamayanaka. But you, you can understand it. It's free from sin. It had good bad, good even shut. And understanding this, you become wise. And all your endeavors lead to perfection. So here we got, we got. So far, we got no dance chance over here. Do you, rec you recognize this mug? Maya Porti Jai. <laughs> I, I think I was. I think I was Carlos talking. So, well, she, he has the whole thing. Remember? Right there. Yeah. Well, to start, uh, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna interrupt your class. Where do you want to sit? It's too far. It's uh, too close to the noise. No, this is good. I think it's good. I'll put my headphones or something. All right. Actually, can you hold this for a second? My bag. My bag. That's cool. Hare Krishna devotees. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Nice. How's it going? <laughs> it's going well, according to Krishna's plan, always. How are you doing, Prabhu? You guys are having a kirtan? Jai. Yeah, there's, there's a kirtan happening right now. It's um, every Wednesday, the youth get together to do kirtan. And um, every Wednesday and Sundays, but uh, Wednesday is mostly predominantly youth. And Anitinanda Chandra is visiting Alachua. Oh man, good thing you have your gum, so there's mosquitoes. And um, and so he's leaving tomorrow. Actually, I came to just uh, to come bid my farewell. He's a dear friend of mine, and he's a great devotee. So it's a, it's awesome you guys are getting his association. Man, I think the connection may be a little slow. You may have to like walk around to get a good spot look because they froze. You see that? Yeah. Can you guys tell us how the connection is? Um, it is a little, a little laggy. Here, let a little me... laggy. Oh, David Stallings. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. We just had a short. Uh, here, I'm trying to figure out what's the best spot. We're in the, so we're out in a lot country place, and um, trying to figure out where's the best place for Wi-Fi because uh, cellular service is too low. Let me put my headphones on. Let me close this door. So how, how, can you guys hear me well? Can you guys hear me well? It's actually worse. It's worse. Oh, God. Okay. I don't even know where the... Um, How's this? Is this good? Um, that sounds okay. okay I'm, I'm going to go to the other side of the building and see if it's any better. Just bear, bear with me. Any difference in the video? Not okay. really. It's a little rough still. 
We just get these little magical glimpses of where you are. Okay, how's this? How's this? Is that good? any good? I, it, it's okay. Uh, that, that sounds very... Uh, <laughs> is that uh, super reassuring? Yes. <laughs> no, it does seem like this is maybe the best. This is the best spot. So yeah. I have some students here from Wisdom of the Sages. We're doing a Bhagavad Gita memorization course. This is Vaishnavi. She is a local, a Lacho Vaishnava. And she's, she's actually a, a great healer. And I, I've experienced it myself. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Hi, Yes. Ryan. Really. Can you tell me? Can you hear me clearly? Not clearly. Okay. Um, do you get a lot of in, 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 inference? Um, interference with the music because I could get closer to the building and possibly have a stronger signal but maybe more music it might be worth trying with your headphones it might be okay okay for me I think I think your voice was coming through okay just uh videos laggy um but the music wasn't too bad okay how's this is this any better is it working they're, they're, they're telling me it's lagging. it's lagging a little bit, but it's but uh, no, it kind of got worse, I think. How's this? How's this? Can you see? Can you see the beautiful face? Oh God! It's still lagging. Okay, gonna... guys. Yeah, we're in the country. Hare Krishna. Check here. Right here. Just check right here. How's this? Is this good? Um, maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe about the same. Uh, I guess we'll see in a couple seconds. Okay. They said good. They said maybe. Okay. So, just tell me. Can you hear me well? Yes, Prabhu. Yeah, they can it's hear okay. Me well. then. All right. Boom. Okay, so it's good. Thank you very much. You could, you could turn off your camera to help. You know, yeah, I could turn off the camera. Should I? Will they turn off their camera? Would that make a difference? Maybe. maybe. Okay. Maybe Thank you very much, Faru. Thank you so much. Have a safe uh, trip. All right. Great soul has just left our left my view. Krishna Kishore, good friend of mine. He's uh, the godfather of my kids. Uh, he's a total sweetheart, and he's. A great inspiration for all the young devotees here. He, he does all kinds of nice youth programs here. So we are on our last verse. Every, everyone can hear me still? Okay, good, good. So, idam to take, no. This verse reminds me of, uh, the, I think it's the first verse of chapter nine of the Bhagavad Gita, because you have this word guya. Guya means secret. Um, can somebody tell me what's the first two words? Because I'm not looking at a book right now. Iti guya. Iti guya tamam. Iti guya tamam sastram. Idam uktva. Maya Anaga Etat Bhutpa Budiman Shat Krita Krita Shabarata. So Iti 
thus, or therefore this, you know, thus. This is actually the greatest secret of the Vedas. Now, if you read actually the first verse, I think it's actually uh, chapter seven. Um, chapter nine and chapter seven start with three introductory verses. And it's a, they're, they're, the way that they're structured are, are very similar. So can, some, can someone tell me what is the, uh, I think it is Maya Shakta Manaparta. That's the first verse of chapter seven. Maya Shakta Manaparta Yogam Yunjan Madashaya Asham Shayam Shamagramam Itha Grashisi Tachinu. Then the second verse is Janate Hams. No, oh, wait, wait, wait. Janate Hams will be good. So no, no, we're, the verse that I'm actually thinking about is chapter nine. Um, what's the first verse of chapter nine? You see, it's kind of similar. It has this word, guyatamam. Idam tute guyatamam. Idam tute guyatamam. Pravakshami. Anasuyave. So if you look at these two lines, they're very similar. What is he saying? Ami, when you have the word, the, the root, Ami, it is the verb to do that I will do. Like Pibhami, I drink. Patami, I read. Pashami, I see. So Idam Tute Guyatamam, Pravakshami, I will speak to you. Um, Something that is guyatamam, the greatest of all secrets. And here he's and he says, Why? This is chapter nine, text two. Uh, idam tute, no, check text one. It's pravakshami anasuyave because you're anasuya, you're non envious, your heart is clean, your heart is pure. Non hostile, not jealous. So it's very similar to this verse, isn't it? Itiguyatamam sashram idam mukva. He's not saying I will speak, he said I have spoken. Mukva, what I've said, I have said to you because you're anaga without sin. So, yeah, itiguyat, um, I'm going back to the. So this chapter nine, it be, it's the beginning of uh, diving into thing uh, into the subject of devotional service. Srila Prabhupada makes the the kind of end result of Bhagavad Gita, kind of the more advanced chapters of Bhagavad Gita, chapters like seven through twelve. He makes he makes those points. Clear in his purports in verses one, chapters one, two, and three. Like, even though those those topics aren't very clear, and I think I might have given the example before. Um, we have, oh, we got Chapu here too. Hi, Krishna Chapu. Are you with us? Hari Wal. Hari Krishna. So yeah, we're here in Florida with uh, our good friend Krishna Kishore. Is uh, help, he's helped me set, set up this um, so I can do this class here. And the kids are in the kirtan right now. So, um, so in chapters 2 and 3, especially chapter 2, Krishna teaches something that's guya, very secret. What is that? He teaches how you're not the body. How many, um, how many of you learn in high school or in college that you're not the body? That's a, that's a great secret. Even uh, how th there is a th there is a supreme power that connects everything, and a lot of that is discussed in chapter seven. So it's it's it gets deeper and deeper. So the 
earlier chapters are considered secret, meaning you can't learn this stuff anywhere. And then the, as you go on, chapters eight, chapter seven, Guyatara, secret, and then Guyatara, more secrets. And then Guyatamam, most secrets. So there's different three different levels that are being discussed. And so Krishna's saying this is, uh, he starts it off in chapter nine saying, hey, now I'm going to speak about the most secret stuff. Specifically, that's the, the path of bhakti. And this is continuing on until, you know, chapter 15, he's still talking about bhakti yoga. Um, and it's hinted in the earlier chapters, but it's, if you're not reading Bhagavad Gita as it is, then it, you might not um, even get the point of what's the point of bhakti yoga because it's it it's not so clear until the later chapters. And one of the examples I think I've already given before is an air traffic controller. They re, re, rely on a clear repetition, a very clear message, repeated constantly. Otherwise. Like we had in um, uh, like 40 something years ago, they had a big plane accident where 657 people died because there was a miscommunication. Someone said, Oh, you take, you go in, you, are you at the, at the takeoff? And he said, Okay. And the other one said, Okay. And then the two planes went and they crashed into each other. And then both, in both lanes, most, almost every single person died. I think everyone died. It was a huge, you know, disaster. And so they say you can't say okay anymore, you know, in air traffic control. You have to be very clear. Otherwise, uh, disastrous situation, you know, can can be found. So similarly, because uh, people are so unclear and not very uh, adept in understanding all these sciences. Prabhupada just starts speaking about bhakti in the very beginning. It's like he takes, you know, it's like you're taking some kind of course uh, to become a doctor and some of the material on the advanced level uh, courses are present in your beginning course. What's guyatamam? That's the point of guyatamam. Iti uh, guyatamam sashtram. So Shastra, everybody remember that word, Sastra? There are two kinds of Sastra. There's Sastra and Shastra. And I believe it is the long A is the weapon. And Shastra is scripture. If a society is not ruled by spiritual knowledge, then they're ruled by force. Astra, weapon. But if they just have spiritual knowledge and they can just, you know, they can just follow spiritual knowledge. They don't need the, the force. It's like if a child, if he, he may be forced to do so many things. Like say a child is, is forced into some strict lifestyle. And then when he gets away from his parent or his, you know, military school, immediately he wants to give up that thing. But if he can understand the intelligence behind it, then he, he, he may do it out of his own desire. So, no, no, I'm going back to chapter nine again. Iti guyatamam sastram idam uktva. Uktva, he says, I, what is that? Having said, it's past tense. It's like, remember, we did the word gatva. Remember I said the words that end with the, that VA, it's like a past tense, uh, Uktva. Prabhu, it's, it's Uktam. Okay, well, uh, I'm mixing up words then from some other verse. Can you read the verse for me? I'm, it, I'm, I'm, I can try to pull out my, I use my, rest my iPad on my thigh, <laughs> and then I can look, I can read something while I'm, instead of doing it with the, the rusty brain mixing verses together so can you read the verse for me yeah iti guya tamam shastram idam uktam 
Mayan. Okay. Yeah. Um, Mayan Nagaha Etad Budva Budhiman Syat Krita Krityas Cha Bharata. Nice, nice. Uh, idam Uptvam Uptvam. Well, it's still there. The TV, the TVA is still there, isn't it? TVA is there. Uh, it's U K T A M. Uktam. Uktam. Okay. Uktam. Uktam. Maya anaga. And anaga means sin. Anaga. Agam papam. Krishna says, agam papam, that you can be freed from grievous sins. He says this. Um, very early in the Bhagavad Gita, he says, if you offer food, if you just eat food, you're basically eating something that's just taken. You're kind of a stena, a thief. But if you offer food, it's like you're going into your parents' you know, dresser and, and taking the money out of their wallet. You know, But if you say, mommy, can I buy you a gift? She's like, yeah. <laughs> Mommy, I want to buy you. I want to buy you a gift. You know, it's, she's she's okay. the only way the child can buy a gift for the mother is by the mercy of the mother or the father. Okay, now I got my iPad up and I got the Wi-Fi on it, so I can start looking up what we're reading. Uktamayananga etad etat etat. Etad. Etad. Etad Bhutva. Bhudiman Shat. Krita Krita Now, there are some really nice points in the purport that Srila Prabhupada says. And so I'll just take a look at that and see if there is any reflections. Okay. So one has to become free from all sinful reactions. Actually, reading this reminds me a lot of the purport of the first verse of the commentaries and stuff like that that I read for the uh, that 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 again that verse one of chapter nine. They're very similar, and so. One, unless one is freed from all sinful reactions, it's just, I think, a good, one of the last paragraphs. The word anaga, by which Arjuna is addressed, is significant. Anaga, a oh, sinless one, means unless one is freed from all sinful re reactions, it is very difficult to understand Krishna. One must become free from all contamination, all sinful activities. Then he can understand but the devotional service is so pure and potent that at once one engaged in devotional service, he automatically comes to the stage of sinlessness. So uh, in chapter 9, text 1, the purport by Vishnu Chakvati Thakur, he says, if you take a needle and pierce a stack of leaves, I'm... It is, in a sense, gradually going through all the leaves, but it's also, in a sense, just happening automatically, the piercing of the leaves. You know, say you stack a bunch of leaves, and you put a needle through it. The time that goes through each layer of leaf is very, very small. It happens quite rapidly, but it is, in a sense, a sta different stages or in succession. So he says, similarly, when one practices devotional service, very quickly, one becomes completely free from sinful reactions. And so here Prabhupada says, uh, let's see, he, he automatically comes to the stage of sinlessness. So it's, it's a rapid purification, much more rapid. Oh, I, oh, man, I read so many nice things in this um, let me just read it. Let's read it because it was like it was nectar. Chap, uh, this is Vishnu Chakravati Thakur. 
No, validate the devotion, validate the devotion. This purport uh, of the second verse and the, and the first verse of, of chapter nine. That's the blue covered book that I sent as a PDF. And um, let's see if we can stop. All right, one second. I, oh, I like this part. It says, it talks about um, kings do not keep their treasures secret. Everyone knows the king has a treasure house, but they very attentively keep their personal mantras secret. So they're generous. So kings are like, let's say a, a king means like an, a really noble minded person. So the devotees, they're very generous, but they, they're, when it comes to bhakti, when it comes to like the secrets of bhakti, they handle that knowledge with great care. Although they're very, they're very, they're an open book for so many other things. They handle, they handle the knowledge of bhakti with great care. Meaning they don't like say, go up to, say somebody is like a super duper advanced devotee and they're like having visions of Krishna in, the, in like in their dreams and their cowherd boys playing together. He might not go to somebody on the street and say, hey, God's a cowboy and I play with him in my, you know, my, when I sleep and, you know, that's private. You know, it's very, it's very dear to the heart. If something becomes, you know, loses potency when it's, when it's, so it's like a private matter shared publicly. <laughs> so with great care, he tries to explain bhakti to others. He doesn't just say, oh yeah, Krishna is just a cowboy. Okay, we got to go now. Yes, yes. So I think we're heading out. I think I still have a signal. Um, yeah. So, one second. I'm going to hand it over to you guys, and you guys can start practicing the verse with each other. Okay. So I'm going to get in the car, hand it over to you guys. I'll give you a kiss. Thank you. Oh. I'm right there. I think uh, Chance or Chapu has seniority here, so uh, <laughs> I think it's up to one of you to take us off. I suppose that's true. <laughs> Having dinner, likely, likely excuse. Okay. So yeah, text 20. Um, I'm gonna try going over it, see if I, see if I know, can, can do this one. Uh, text 20. Iti kuyatamam chastram idam uptam Yanaka, it had put far, put him on his chip. Kutak with Yasta Parta. So, yeah, we'll uh, we can start by going, uh, just going line for line. Line one. Iti Gyatamam Shastram. I forgot I should move. <laughs> Idam Uptam Mayanaka Etat Budva Budhiman Shat Krita Krityas Cha Parata One more time. Iti kiyatamam shastram.
Itam Upta Mayanaka Etad Bhutva Bhutiman Shat Krita Krityascha Parata uh, Quickly I'll go over the um go ahead and go over the word for word. Iti thus, the atomum, the most confidential. Shastram, revealed scriptures. Idam thus, uktam, disclosed. Maya, by me. Anagha, O sinless one. Itat, this. Udva, understanding. Budhimam. Putiman, intelligent. Siat, one becomes. Krita Krityaha, the most perfect. Cha and Paratha, O son of Paratha. Translation This is the most confidential part of the Vedic scriptures, O sinless one, and it is disclosed now by me. Whoever understands this will become wise, and his endeavors will know perfection. So if anyone wants to uh, take over the line for line, uh, Carlos. Okay, sure. Thank you. So, iti kuya tamam shastram. Idam kutam maya naga. Etad budva budimam siyat. Krita Kritias Cha Bharata. Does anyone want to correct my, uh, my pronunciation, please? No, I think you're doing pretty good. I I keep I keep wanting to give the uh, the on the at the end of the third line. I keep wanting to say a sh instead of a sya. Instead of saying syat, I keep wanting to to say shiat. But uh, but that's just me. Like just have to have to catch myself. But you no, know, you're doing pretty good. Okay, so I'll do it again. So iti guya tamam shastram idam uk sorry idam uktam maya naga etad budva budi mam shya sorry shya Shut. <laughs> You're doing fine. Then I messed you up. No, no, no. It's all good. Shiat. Shiat. How do you say it again? Shiat. 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 Okay. So edar budva budimam shiat. Krita kritias cha bharata. So I'll pass it on to David. Thank you to both of you. Um, Iti guya tamam shastram. Itam uktam mayanaka. Etad budva budhiman syat. Krita Krityash Chapaharata Okay, so I'll do it one more time since I'm the last one here. Um, Itti Guya Tamam Shastram Itam Uktam Mayanaga Etad budva budhiman syat. Krita krityas cha bharata. And Chapu shows up at a perfect time to take their turn. 
Iti guya tamam shastram, idam uktam mayanaka, etat bodhva bodhiman siat, kritta krityas chaparata. <coughs> Hare Krishna. So I'm, I'm just going to continue with that purple. It looks like we got, I got the signal here. Is this better than it was at the temple? Okay, this is just driving in the road. I think it's, yeah, it's better than the Wi-Fi. Um, so on that purple, we're talking about uh, how the sin, the karma has to be uh, vanquished. So the first thing it says, the most important thing one has to surmount is the weakness of the heart. And there's a, there's a Sanskrit term for that somewhere. I forget what it is. It's somewhere, perhaps in the Bhagavad Gita. Prabhupada uses that term previously. And the first fall down, this is in the Prabhupada's purport, is caused by the desire to lord, lord over material nature. So how did we get in contact with material nature? How do we uh, lose our spiritual position because we wanted to lord it over into nature we wanted to control it and then he, after that he becomes attached to matter and the possession of matter the problem of material existence is due to these weaknesses of heart so the first one is lording over material nature and then the second one is he becomes more attached uh to matter and the possession of matter and so then he says that the first five verses refer to freeing oneself from these weaknesses of the heart. So the first five verses of chapter 15 are kind of this, this uh, jnana. Jnana means the, the distinguished matter from spirit, distinguished that, that which is unimportant to which is important, uh, thus develop some kind of uh, detachment from the material spirit. Um, yeah, chapter 15 is talking about the beginning talks about this uh, how this is just the reflected world and then he says and the rest of the verses in the chapter the sixth verse to the end discusses purushottama yoga so the rest of the verses are all um in i this verse is about reincarnation but they're about the um you have like verses about the Supreme Personality of Godhead, how he is maintaining. You have um, these verses about how the ultimate conclusion comes to the point of uh, Sarva Bhavena Bharata, full loving service. Let's see what else we got here. So we, what it, can you someone tell me what are those three things that we've been mentioning the last several verses? as we stop to get water at the Dollar General. And my son has a question. Where's my son? He's there in the back. I don't know if it's a Bhagavad Gita question. It does have a question, but he says, Hare Krishna. I don't know if you... So can you tell me, some of you tell me, well, what was that, that, la that thing that we've been talking about? The three kind of stages or subjects Isn't one of or two of them, I guess, Abhideyu and Prayotana or Prayotana? Yes, Abhideya and Prayojana. And the first one is Sambandha. So the, the, the first three verses of this section, verses 16, 17, 18, are the framework. Like we said, the map. Chap, verse 19 is the, the journey. Or uh, as we says, what we said before, the hypothesis, the experiment, and the result. And here, this verse I mentioned, it is the result, but it doesn't really get in depth about the result. It's more just saying that by this, a person comes to the end result. Krita Krita All of his endeavors will know perfection. They'll become fully wise. So he's basically saying he becomes to the liberated position. He's is is at the end of the the, the story is is he, he reached it so it doesn't really unlike some other verses it doesn't really describe the nature of the result it's more of just kind of hinting that the result is attained through this 
Um, like here, uh, Baladev Dibushan says, understanding this, a person develops full knowledge of the scriptures and he will achieve direct realization. Krita Kritaya. And so, it, usually Prayojana means like, ha, means having attained full love of God. And so that's just kind of hinted here, just that, that there's, that they're, they've gone beyond matter, that their endeavors have attained perfection. So it's not, they kind of progress like that. Yeah. Um, any reflections? Of my dad at home, but he's probably screwed. <laughs> my dad said that he's supposed to be eating sandwiches. The cat for himself. Everyone's a little shy. The cat has just been eating cat food. Okay, so uh, I'll just read it a couple times. Oh my dad and my cat. Iti shastram. Idam uktam mayanagha ithat bhutva bhudimansyat and you see bhutva that's a past tense one there understanding you'll see the the va instead of bhuti it's bhutva krita 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 Shabharata Iti Gayatamam Sastram Idam Uktam Mayanadha Etad Bhutva Budiman Syat Krita Krita Shabharata Iti Guyatamam Shastram. So here, this Shastram, that's the, the weapon is a short, the long is the scripture. It booked bum, it bum, book bum, Mayanagha. It had Buddha, Buddhimansya. So someone, I, there is a massive percentage of the Vedas deal with the subject of Karma Kanda. So who can tell me what Karma Kanda is? Mr. David Stallings. Um, Chapuji, Chapuji. Mm, I think Karma Kanda is like a section where all the rituals and yeah, like kind of rituals are being stated. And and what what is the aim of such rituals? Mm, that's a good question. <laughs> material a chance gain. And material gain. Karma. Good karma. Okay. Do, do a sacrifice and get a beautiful house, a wife, and a nice life. <laughs> like someone is saying this song, um, um, a house by the sea, an HTV, HDTV, Jaya Jagadi Shahari. So there's this desire for, oh, let me do all this. Let me be a very pious person and do all of these great rituals and follow all the rules. Why? Because I want stuff. I like stuff. And what does it say in the end of the purport about, uh, it says, um, the two weaknesses of the heart, the desire to lord over material nature and the desire to uh, 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 becoming attached and uh, uh, to you know, matter and uh, accumulating things. What does it say? To matter and the possession of matter. Therefore, in the Bhagavatam was spoken. First thing that was said in uh, 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 the second verse of Bhagavatam is, is 
Dharma Projito Kaitavatra. This this book just kicks out all this materialistic cheating religion. It means it really you, you you cheat yourself out of the real jewel. It's like you sign up for the, you you thought you're going to win something wonderful, but they actually uh, make the made the wrong choice and chose something that's so much more insignificant than the real prize. So uh, in the beginning of the, the second verse, the Bhagavatam says, this book has nothing to do with materialistic religion that really makes you miss out the goal. And as you may remember, Veda Vyas, he wrote all these Vedas for the sake of helping people because he knew, okay, Kali Yuga, people can't memorize all this, the entire Vedas. So let me put it in a systematized way. Let me divide the Vedas into four. Let me put the, uh, make the Puranas and histories, the Mahabharata, uh, the, the Ramayan. And even after writing all that, he felt something is not complete. Something's wrong. Something's missing. And then he spoke to his spiritual master. He said, well, actually, you know, you've just encouraged people in materialism in the name of religion because a lot of the Vedas deal with this karma kanda, this kind of uh, um, material, you know, just, just it's, it has its purpose because it helps somebody realize something greater than them. And it's a very gradual process. I'm trying to, as we're driving here, I'm trying to remember how we led into Karma Kunda. Does anybody keep me on track? Before we got to Karma Kunda, what was the subject? I can't remember, but I have a question, Chandra. Yes, yes. yes. I, don't know, I, don't I don't know if you remember um, this Pankajangri Prabhu that passed away. Yes, Pankajangri Prabhu. Prabhu. Yes, yes. Great yeah. devotee. I, I don't know because I was watching some videos about him and the, like previous weeks before he left left his, his body. Uh, they were doing like some rituals at the Ganges. They were oh, like yes. reading and they were like doing some kind of prayers. And I was wondering, and I, I always wanted to ask you if all those activities are considered like karma kanda. No, no, it's it, it's 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 all about the i'm it's all about the intention you know you're trying to you're trying to do something because you want to get something a lot of times even in the bhagavatam it, it, it's meant to sometimes entice people like some oh you do this uh the, a lot of times at the end of some scripture they will say the shruti fall shruti pal shruti means uh what you're hearing in Paul means the fruit, the fruit of what you're hearing. And they'll describe, oh, you do this and you'll get this benefit, that benefit. Um, but it's kind of just like the sugar on the medicine, just trying to, there's there's a deeper thing behind it. Yeah, because now, when you're like, doing, like in, you know, I'm sorry. All those rituals are, yeah, completely uh, mm -hmm. in, in in relation to devotional service. Mm, yeah. and, and, and although they're, some of them are identical or some of them may be similar to rituals that are found in some uh, tradition that's more karma kanda based um, but this this the sake of the ritual is for the pleasure you have the basically three levels you have karma kanda actually you have karma kanda and this is a, a very uh, you know it sounds kind of a weird thing oh we have but okay. Karma Kanda sounds like, oh, I know why we were talking about, oh, I brought up Karma Kanda. Um, my point was that most of, most literature in India and, and Vedas are materialistic. So it, the bhakti side is, it's a great secret. It's Guyatama. Most of it's Karma Kanda. Then a smaller section is going to be the Jnana Kanda, the Upanishads that, that, philosophical, you know, hey, you're not the body, don't waste your time on, you know, rituals for materialistic benefits, because even the demigods aren't happy in heaven, they have troubles. And, you know, it's just kind of that more cutting philosophy that shows that there's no real happiness in the material world, that's called jnana. 
And then the last section is called Upasana Khanda, or worship, and that, that, that includes bhakti or devotional service. And even within bhakti, there is the, the knowledge of Krishna in the form of opulence, and then there's Madhurya, the knowledge of Krishna and, and, and his feature of sweetness. And so that is even more rare, that kind of information. Um, so that, I remember that's that's why I brought in this Ganakanda. So yeah, generally, most of the literature is in Ganakanda, uh, Karmakanda. Then there's less Ganakanda, and then even less that deals with the Bhakti. That's, we may think we have a lot of books, but there's a whole lot of books all about, you know, a whole lot of information all about just enjoying this world. Um, and you really have to, like, the, there's a song about the six Goswamis, Nana Sastra Vichara Naika Nipuno Sadharma Samstapako. You really have to dig deep to really get the essence. And that's why things like books like the Bhagavatam and great saints like the Goswamis have brought this stuff in the forefront to make it clear. Just, just, just in case somebody doesn't have, you know, thousands of years lifespans, read all the books and be able to read it four times over, just to and and to come to a, a clear conclusion. Um, I just before we head out, I just want to say how these three systems are actually there in in, um, in all traditions: karma kanda, jnana kanda, and bhakti. So here's a question. Would you say in every religion there's some kind of prosperity gospel? People who practice it because they hope it's going to make line their pockets, keep them, um, you know, God's going to, you know, like, you, you, you know, I live in Texas. They had all the televangelists, you know, give, you know, give $1,000 now or give this money, give $100 now, and God's going to reward you in so many ways. Materially speaking, you know, like they're not talking about deepening your love. They're just talking about how you're going to just, it's like you're betting, you know, it's like playing the lotto with God. Um, so, and, you know, in every religion, there's some sense of like, I do this because it makes me, you know, a certain group, certain section of society. I do this because it makes me respected. Uh, it gives me hope of, I'm going to benefit myself. It could not even be religion. It could be some form of like tantra, some rituals, some magic, anything, anything that's like in a mystical sense. A lot of people do it with the hope that it's going to get them something. They're going to enjoy. Why do people want to go to heaven? Is it for a pure loving service to, to, to the eternal servant? No, nobody. I, it would be practiced now. It's like it's the promise of enjoyment, or at least you want to avoid distress. You know, Krishna talks about different people worship him. He said they're those who are seeking freedom from distress. So that's more on the karma kanda mentality, and you, you, so you find that in Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism, Christianity. You find that there. And then you have the next level. What's the next level? It's called jnana kanda, where people have some jnana. They have that ability to distinguish matter from spirit. And they're like, oh, no, no, no. Even if I take birth as an indra, you know, that, that's, that's, it's not a, that's a bad deal. That sucks. It's, you know, any kind of material situation is a bad deal. So it's a high level of thinking where the person just wants moksha. They want nirvana. They want to go to the kingdom of God. They want to go to heaven. They want to be free from all the problems of this world and just be um, free from that suffering. So that's the next section of the Vedas. But then you find that, again, this is something you find a certain class of people like that anywhere. They just want that nirvana, want to get out of this world maybe smaller section. And the last is the highest. Uh, what do the first one and two have, have in common? Karmakanda and Gyanakanda people mentality. What do they have in common? 
wanting all, something in return. It's all about them, yeah. Exactly, Bailey. Bailey's there. I'm going to very soon. It's all about what do I get? How will I be benefited? How will I be the enjoyer? How will I uh, come out on top? Either you know, I need to get liberated and be not stuck in this repeated world of birth and death, or I need to you know become a king and enjoy heavenly delights. But the the the, the bhakti level, pasana kanda, or the, that section, it, it's not about what am I getting. Now, of course, nobody starts. It's not like okay, you start oh, you start chanting japa, and now you're free from all material desires. And you are uh, the you know, you're, you're on the level of Jesus Christ. No, we may have some attraction and and and, and, and feel some attraction to the wisdom and, and see attraction to the benefits, but still we might not be there, free from material desires. But it's a process that destroys those material desires. We start off, you know, you may come to bhakti. But as Krishna says, because you're in distress, or you're, you know, uh, this is chapter seven, seeking knowledge, or freedom, freedom from distress, or um, seeking wealth, or or just seeking God. It's uh, the absolute. Different kinds of people will come, but the heart becomes cleansed by that process, and to the point where he just. All he wants is just Krishna's happiness. And there are many examples of that. Uh, as anybody can think of an example of a young boy who approached Krishna seeking something, some, some material situation. But then later it was just like, no, I, I was looking for, actually, I found the real gem, Krishna, and that's you. What I was looking for was just little pieces of glass. You're the gem. Anybody know who was thinking like that, speaking like that? A lot. No, no. He is a young boy. He, he came it? out like on a super advanced level already. Was He's it? like the, the, uh, he like the greatest. Dhruva Maharaj, the boy that's standing on one foot meditating. Why is he, why is he meditating? He wants a kingdom greater than his grandfather, who happens to be Lord Brahma. He just wants a, He wants his own universe. And finally, when Krishna appears, due to his great, great determination and also by the mercy of Narada Muni, he's like, man, well, I was a foolish person trying to get a universe. That's nothing. I have you. This is way better. So yeah, this is that's why it's uh, that's why this Gunyata moment said it's it's a very special bhakti is very special thing, not easily accessed. We you know we hope you know that it can be digestible by people through you know the great activities of Kastuba and Raghunath that make it so fun and and accessible and but um, and there is hope that. There is some transformation period that is actually expected. But everybody in the world, uh, it takes, they ha everyone has to come when they want to. Krishna doesn't force anybody. We, we, can, we can only do our part um, and, just be, and, and leave the results up to Krishna. So, uh, why don't you try uh, practice the verse a few more times? Or if, you, if anybody has anything to share or questions to ask, and I'll just I'll tap out here for now, and then we'll come. Oh, Chapuji has to go. Does everybody think we're we're at a, a completion point? Is this, is this good for everybody? We did get to recite the verse a bit of times. Are we meeting there, on Saturday, Prabhu? I think we can. Yeah. Okay. We can. Uh, we can just keep on helping each other get the verses down, um, and then we figure out at some point um, another chapter.
uh, I had an email from Kashtuba's wife asking me to give some information so I could, we can like get ready for like uh, advertising another class or something. It's kind of exciting. Yeah. Uh, it's very exciting. But, uh, yeah. Well, probably what we'll do is uh, we'll gather, like, show, they'll probably, you know, before the class even starts with those emails, and we'll again figure out what's the, what is the hottest time for a class. I previously, when I started giving the class, I was also taking a GBC college class and some other class. So, there were certain times that I wasn't available. Now uh, my schedule will be, should be more open. So we'll just again set out that, that uh, I think when is good website and then people can just pick the times are good. I will just pick the most popular time. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, ta -sa. Thanks so everybody say hi Bo. Hello. And they're saying hi, Bo. You can't hear me. It's my headphones. <laughs> <laughs>